that he did a while back for uh, I think it was for Vertigo it first came out. I don't um, remember. I do know I've read a couple like I said, I've read a couple books. I, I actually haven't read the original Sweet Tooth stuff, so maybe I'll have to go do that next. Yeah, and then they just came out now with uh, like a, a black label Sweet Tooth book that just came out last yeah, year. Yeah, well. and like I've read that one, and then I think I read the one before that. But uh, okay, why did it? Oh, that was weird. Yeah, I, I mean, I know some people that love that book. Like, it's it was a pretty they uh, really enjoyed oh, yeah. it. So I know it's it's pretty, definitely I think a very themed a book. Uh, it it is originally <laughs> looked like I think it might even now be Vertigo. I don't know where it is now, but it, it definitely started Vertigo in uh, two thousand nine. So yeah, okay, yeah, so it's been around for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an it's a long running book, uh, and it, it did pretty good. I think the whole general time of its run. Once again, I think it's got a very specific like style, which most Vertigo books I think have a very like specific style to their books in the sense that it's like not as open to all viewers. You know what I mean? Sometimes they're yeah. more m mental or you know yeah. themed, and that's not to like dis dis them in any way. That's just like. You know the difference in writing a spider-man comic versus something you're gonna put down into a vertigo title spider-man you're kind of trying to just make him good for everybody you know what i mean and sell mm -hmm. as many spider-man books as you can whereas vertigo is more like all right i have a story to tell and i'm gonna make my story in the theme of whatever story it's gonna be uh and there's lots of great great comic titles that fit that so like sandman is very themed very specific style uh, I'd say Seven to Eternity is like that. Yeah. Very, very. That just starts back up too again. Yeah, it's good, man. I've been enjoying it. I, but it is once again, it's very specific. He's very much telling a story of with his own flow. Uh, even in the sense of like the way he does uh, like the narration. Mm -hmm. is very like themed and stylistic i feel like is very very unique to the title so i, I think i'm interested in it. I, I i hope more people give sweet to the chance i do <laughs> i think honestly that the um the fact that it's live action will open up a little more because the original drawing style of sweet tooth is a little uh it's a is it's a you know it's not uh, bad i'd say that it's, it's intentionally off-putting yeah exactly you know what I mean? yeah it's like written almost macabre to kind of make you like people are drawn and... with interesting proportions to make them seem yeah. uh yeah. sickly or exactly i mean like sweet tooth even his neck's all scanning very it's very like... much and, <laughs> and once again that's something that's prevalent in lots of different types of media drawing yeah. characters with a style so that they look or give off a certain impression right like mm -hmm. uh you know, Mickey Mouse. The original you want to do Mickey Mouse. Or yeah, yeah. more, or yeah. Phil, or more. You know, yeah. Absolutely, and so like, there's lots of different ones that uh, do that. <laughs> so I'm excited for it, especially because in general, I think most comic book TV show titles have been doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they have. Uh, like I said, I was checking out Jupiter's Legacy. I know a lot of uh, the Rotten Tomato scores are starting to kind of come in a little bit more. It's, it's, it's doing okay on the general audience critics uh, not caring for it too much I, I really but uh don't care what the critics say man they're just always <laughs> they, wrong like <laughs> it's it, it, that. i mean it's a good show i mean i like uh so far it's just basically it, it follows this group of superheroes that you know g generic like superman wonder you know all these characters that we kind of come to know and but they kind of do a twist on it where we flash forward to the kind of the future of these heroes. We're not at like their prime in the golden age of them where they're like fighting crime and villains and all that. We're at the time now where they've passed on their powers to their kids now. And now they expect their, their children to take on the code is what they call it. The code is like where you, you can't kill anybody. You need to, you know, represent who you are for America and just like, you know, Mark. just do the right thing. The good. What kind of American um, code but then, is that? <laughs> Sorry, go but the kids, no, it's okay. But the kids, they find out very quick, but you know what's pretty cool is that they kind of played on to like how the world is acting now, which was kind of weird. That, but that's how he did it in his original books. Is that you know, the world's changing. You know, the even the heroes are like we have to kill now because the villains are no longer, you know, they're they're no longer holding back. They're killing us now, and they're it's, so, and they're they're stuck between this like you know, well, do we have do we uphold our our you know our legacy of our 
of our, you know, our father and our mother. They find out or very quickly, you know, the... do our own thing. <laughs> so it, it, it's pretty cool. It's an interesting story. It's it's got some questionable CGI scenes sometimes here and there, but it's not too bad to where I'd be like, eh. It, it's a TV uh, show, so it doesn't bother me too much. But it, oh man, it's always so rough for me to think of people who are. And no, not not to offend against you or anyone, but to think of people who are just like a hundred percent reliant on how the art is to determine if they're gonna watch something or the special effects, because mm-hmm. there's so many good things out there that do not have good special effects or do yeah. not have good art. Um, and it's and that once again, I don't, I just feel bad because they miss out on great stories that would have otherwise been palatable for them. If the art if was kind better, of over it, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> if you just got over. And once again, if it's so atrocious, I totally get it. And those are standards everyone's like free to have, obviously, right? Like I'm not telling people, well, you can't judge something based on art. I'm just saying that, you know, you may miss out on something you like because of that. And the same goes for the other way, right? If you only judge uh, something uh-huh. if by its story, right? Like, which. You know, if you only judge something by its story, you'll you'd never watch any of the original Power Rangers. <laughs> 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 That's not what you watch for, man. You watch for flipping ninja kickies and mega zordos. Right. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, other than that, I would, I would check it out. You know, it's a pretty cool. Intro. I think it was only eight episodes long, maybe nine. But, but uh, they're about forty-five, you know, to the hour long here, and uh, and it kind of did this flashback too, a little bit of like going back into the 1920s 30s of the great depression time okay. of when their parents and them were going and how they got their powers and how they you know right like a it, it's an interesting thing yeah it was like a really you know going from the future and then going well, go, wow we're now in the, now 19th. We're in the past it was like what's going on here <laughs> so i mean it was interesting whole uh i, I like the words the story's going so far but um i like the actors actors are uh, done pretty well nice. i liked the costume work i thought was pretty done well um Mother than that, yeah, it was a pretty cool little story. Interesting. Um, had a little twist ending for sure <laughs> too as well. Um, I kind of, ha- I kind of had a feeling that was gonna happen, but you know, still, it was it was an interesting ride to kind of go along with it. Yeah, and I all mean, that, it, but... something doesn't have to be surprising to be good. Mm-hmm. I try to like some. I don't know why it's like such a rough thing because like my best example is like you have your favorite movies, right? That you watch. Not again and again, but regularly at some point, right? Once a year, once a month. on the TV, you're like, oh, hey. Right, like, uh-huh. I'm going to watch it. My, my, my dad, every time, I forget the one it, when it is, but it's where the, it's I think it's the island where they're, like, clones and they're escaping from the island or some shit. Is that the, oh, what the heck, Lost? Is that that show, Lost? No, it's it's an actual oh. movie. They're, like, clones oh, it's a movie. living okay, on, never mind. they're, like, living on an oh. island that makes clones for rich people, right? And then, like, kills them and gives them. Oh, you know what? I think I do remember that one. But he, he loves it. Every time it comes on, he'll watch it. Every single time. It doesn't matter if he just watched it yesterday. He, yeah, it was the one where they like they cloned them and then like they were using their body parts for like the rich people, right? Yep. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember this movie. Yes, yeah, that yes. was that was a pretty cool and, movie. And I it's, do like yeah, it. it's not a bad movie at all. But it's once again, it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I mean, he knows exactly what's going to happen every time. He can quote probably the whole movie to you. <laughs> he still enjoys watching it. That's not. I'll do that. You know what I mean? That's not a hundred percent why you watch things is for a surprise ending. You know what I mean? That's cool, but we've all seen one too many M Night Shyamalan. On, you know what I mean? Where it's like that was not that was too twisty. <laughs> what did twist? It, it, robot Chicken. Yeah, well, after he did, uh, what was it? The first one. Uh, what was the first one? Six Sense. Was that the yeah, first yeah, one yeah, that he yeah. did? No, I think he after was that, one before that, but I think that's a really that? big one. Uh, after that, then he was like, "I gotta step it up, bro." But uh, each time it was like. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I it did goes like his little... village when I, but I remember people hating that movie. But th- that's when I seen the I movie. I think the when problem I was, was that he did me. too good on Sixth Sense, and then the other movies kept getting hyped up so much as like this is another great M Night Shyamalan. They were good, but people when they heard that were expecting their equivalent yeah. of the Sixth Sense, which you know the, the village is good, and uh, you you know some of these other ones, but like. I remember my, my, like, once again, going back to just, like, someone I consider kind of a regular viewer, right? Like, not a critic or a fan or a, just a guy who oh, watches stuff. Yeah. Uh, my father, is, who likes him, not Shyamalan, liked The Sixth Sense, liked, uh, I forget what the other one is. Uh, but 
he's like they said the happening was going to be this amazing like thing and then i went there and it was boring um, that right. happening and was oh my gosh it just wasn't that great <laughs> i mean it, uh, it's just like what was it ended signs. up being that was the, the wind, other one, right signs oh you know what i did enjoy signs i thought though. signs is really I, I forget that, he's actually producer on a lot of good stuff too like that one did scare me as a kid growing up watch especially the one where the kids are having the birthday party scene and they they videotape the alien passing by like yeah it's pretty interesting <laughs> man. uh so he has two before six cents which is praying with anger and wide awake obviously the once again his six, the six cents is his big one is, yeah and then he has unbreakable in 2000 which I still have yet to see yet. I've watched his other two movies that came after that, but I haven't watched I that first one. I can't that's that old. Wow, those really did yeah, take a long time to like... Yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah, 2000 even. But oh, dang. was it? Yeah, it's 2000 it even. Fun. It's actually before Signs. Mm, okay. Uh, but he has that, and then Glass is almost 20 years later. Yeah. I wonder why it took him so long to get that out. And then I he didn't direct the other one, did he? Oh yeah, Split was 2016. I don't I don't know. Oh, I, he did that one too. Yeah, that's him. Well, he's a producer on that. He's not a director. Oh, okay, Why I was gonna say doing I was that. Like, Why does it keep... was a very questionable one. <laughs> Why does it keep doing it? Uh, one sec, I'm looking for the other two. No, no, no. Oh, so you're he, right. No, he's director, director of Split and Glass. Huh. Oh, okay. Really? They must. Yeah. He might have co-directed. I think with someone. No, director and writer. All right, well, shit, fuck me. I guess he has been doing good. <laughs> but it, like I said, he does some good stuff. It's just I think sometimes I think those movies did better because they weren't linked to his name. <laughs> that heavily, like, I, I had no idea, right, that he was the director or whatever. And uh -huh. uh, they were great movies. And once again, I don't think my opinion would have changed. But I think that a lot of the times people hear that and they're like, oh, this is a Steven Spielberg movie. And so then they set, like, an unrealistic bar for whatever they're watching. Yeah. Well, speaking of Steve, uh, Steve uh, and Spielberg, he's coming out with that West Side Story remake. Uh, the first trailer just came out. It's not. It doesn't show that. too much. It just no, shows. I, saw, I mean, it a does lot the classic scenery. the alley scene, the, not the whole yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, and then just play some background music yeah. in there. But uh, right. yeah, it shows a lot of what the scenery is going to be. And I like all it. That it's stuff. a classic. It's good. Yeah. And Steven Spielberg is basically a, pro, a tried and proven director, right? Like, he does yeah. pretty good generally all the time. I've always liked this. I don't even. Yeah. You know what? I haven't checked in a while, but let's see what even. Let's see what the spiel's got on him for IMDb. What's he? What's he looking at for? What do we want? We'll do director, right? Uh, yeah. Director. Okay. Jesus Christ! He just stays active. <laughs> Last Gun, Fighter Squad, Escape to Nowhere, Firelight, Slipstream, Amblin, Marcus Welby, Night Game. Oh, some of these are TV shows. Sugarland, Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 1940. I mean, he's got a list of classics back then. Let's go from now and see what he's got. Ready Player One. Oh, yeah, I remember he did that one. Uh, the Adventures of Tintin. That was a pretty good one. War of the Worlds, The Terminal. Um, honestly, he hasn't had too much, like record-breaking stuff since like 2000 but I mean, yeah i mean yeah, probably yeah. jurassic uh park and et were probably and what terminator was he, he did terminator as well didn't he yeah but terminator would have been one of the real old old ones i think yeah that was an 80s that I was, one i don't see it i don't see it on his thing he he produces a lot of stuff yeah and that's where he gets some of them but like oh he did do gremlins but that was 80s Oh, I forgot. Yeah, he did Gremlins as well. He, once again, he has a lot land before time. I remember he was executive oh, producer. Yeah, that's right. He did do land well, but he's time, an executive yeah. producer, not necessarily director for those. So it's it's rough. Um, damn, Fievel's American Tales. Yeah, he yeah he really did Balto. some different stuff with animation he, for sure. He definitely. And once again, I, I think animation wise, he's pretty much. I mean, even regular movie wise. Granted, it's some of the new stuff I don't really recognize that well, but. If he's a producer, it's almost like a, a guaranteed good movie or a good thing. Because like, he has way more hits even on his producer stuff than... Because he's not director of Gremlins. He's just an executive producer, I think. It's, it's, the pro fucked up part is IMDb doesn't separate the stuff very vis visibly. <laughs> and so it's like it blurs right into the top. And then he's got a bunch of writer credits too. All right, well, enough about him. Um, well, let's see. Um, I did have some of my other stuff on my list. So, um, 
I know Netflix, if you should see, they came out with a trailer, what was it, two weeks ago? Um, basically, Netflix is doing this, like, all movie, all summer. Um, till, I, don't, I don't know when the date was for it, but basically they said, I, I think they're supposed to say they're supposed to have a, a new movie almost every day starting last month uh, at the end of April. The question um, is, are they going to have a good new movie? <laughs> Well, they had a couple of good things I've seen on there. Um, and then the TV shows, too, I think were included oh, in there, sure. too. So, like, they yeah. talked about uh, Sailor Moon was on that list, uh, like, the I Trolls, mean, just uh, Tales like... of Arcadia. Um, they had a couple. Really Let me see. I can kind of go on my big list here what they had on their main ones. But they had a couple, like, big, big na- uh, things. Out. The uh, Mitchells versus the Machines being their first one, I think, was what kind of started it off. Um, and that was good too. I, I really enjoyed that movie. You should check it out. That's the same uh, creators who did the Spider Verse movie. Really? So it's kind of had that same type of animation style, mm-hmm. uh, but it it's good. It's interesting. Good story. I I loved it. It was pretty good. Isaiah liked. He been watching. He watched it already like seven times already now. <laughs> Must be good, man. The uh, kids always pick the good ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they won't watch trash again and again. <laughs> oh, Monster is supposed to be coming did, up yeah, on. I did, yeah. Uh, let's see, Oxygen is another movie. Uh, Woman in the Window, Army of Dead, which I, we've probably yeah, seen we the Zack Snyder, Snyder movie. One, yeah. um, which I'm looking forward to. Dave Bautista looks good in that. I mean, I think he's been getting Ghost better. Lab, Blue Miracle, Car- Carnival, Awake, which is supposed to be coming out here soon, June 9th. Um, that one looks pretty good. It's a thriller uh, movie. Imagines a world following a strange global catastrophe that not only wipes out all of electronics, but somehow prevents humans from being able to sleep. As scientists race to find out a cure before humanity is doomed, one former soldier discovers that her daughter may be the key to it all, must decide whether to protect her child or to save the world. <laughs> uh, Wish Dragon, cartoon, animated movie. Skater Girl, um, j- they got some foreign movies as well. Oh, uh, Kevin Hart's coming out with something. Ke- uh, Fatherhood. He keeps coming out with stuff. He's like, fuck it. I'm in quarantine. I'll do it in my house. <laughs> Good on paper. The Ice Road. Uh, America, the motion picture. I have no clue what the heck that is. It's an animated movie. It, hmm. Channing Tatum's in it. Olivia Munn. Oh, Ju- Judy Gr- oh, what? Hmm. Okay, Andy Sandberg's in it as Andy well. Andy <laughs> Sandberg. George Washington assembles a super team of brilliant figures from throughout American history to win the war against brilliant, uh, or sorry, brilliant, uh, Britain in a deeply weird send up of history. <laughs> uh, like Troll Hunter, cool, the right? Rise of Titans, which we were going to discuss. This is Guillermo de Toro's last movie to finish off that animated thing. Which is cool. I thought, I thought it was interesting that he did something like that. I've, so. I always liked it. Isaiah liked it too. It was one of his favorites as well. Especially because he's um, always hits me as a more of a stylistic director. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Resort to Love, The Last Mercenary, Blue, or sorry, Blood Red Sky, The Last Letter from Your Lover, The Kissing Booth Number Three. They've done a couple of those. Sweet Girl. It's uh, he's all that. Beckett, Bobby Ross, Happy Act, or or sorry, Bobby Ross, Bob Ross, <laughs> Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. It's a documentary about him. Um, Loud House Mu- Movie, which is a new, uh, Nickelodeon animated series. Uh, Vivio, it's another animated um, uh, movie coming out as well. So that's about what I have so far. I mean, they have um, a good I list. That... I will say that yeah. in general, they don't... The difference being, I think they're spreading the releases better. They usually do like mass release, where they'll release like once a month, 10 or 15 titles. Yeah. And that's fine, but I think... We've talked about before how a delayed kind of release schedule is better, especially for things like ne- what Netflix releases, which are fully done seasons, fully done, you know, most of the mm-hmm. time. Uh, in that sense, you don't want to, like, content dump right away because you're, like, for lack of a better word, blowing your load. You know what I mean? You, it's like, all right, it's all out there, bitches. And I think Marvel's doing something pretty similarly with their releases this year on Disney Plus, where it's like, all right, instead of like releasing all of WandaVision, which you could finish in two hours or three hours, just in a sit down, we're going to just do one every week. Because once again, I don't like watching it like that, but it is the yeah. smarter way well, for them to release you it. You know, I think COVID really messed that up because oh, I think they really wanted to do was 
they wanted to show the show, and then as soon as the show was done, then boom, it was supposed to lead the right Doctor into that Strange, movie yeah. next week. But I mean, and I love that idea. That would have actually been really nice. No, because no, no. it, was, it like, was a good idea, and no, no, no good idea. Or no plan survives <laughs> contact with the enemy. But um, <laughs> no, for for certain, like I think that they were messed up. But I think they've dealt with it well in the sense that, yeah. like last year, they had nothing. Oh my gosh! It, yeah. And once again, people. <laughs> Even with having nothing, it's the people are still like, oh, man, the DC was up. I was like, they got up on a year where there was no competition. Yeah. And even then, because of COVID, they still had big trouble actually pulling in any large numbers, right? Like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. These numbers for Mortal Kombat are great at, like, what are they at? Like, 70, 80 million now or something, 60 million? Yeah, yeah. Um, those are great numbers for a streaming site, but that's bare minimum for opening day at a movie theater. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, that if you and once again, that's not to like discourage anything. That's just the difference between COVID times and pre-COVID times, and so they're yeah. going to have to find a way to kind of make up for that. You know what I mean? Whatever, yeah. whatever it is they do to make up for that in subscriptions or streaming or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. And, what did you did you watch Wonder Woman yet? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Did you like it? I enjoyed it. Um, I liked it. The story I liked, was okay, you know, but it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, the story great. was okay, but it, you know, I kind of thought about it, and I was like, you know, how else are you gonna, I guess, gonna explain how these people just randomly have like super abilities? Uh, like, I guess. even beyond that, I wasn't even caring about any of that crap. Like, the big thing for me was like, and once again, it wasn't a big thing, but if I had to pick something out, it was the fact that they brought in a whole new character for no oh, good that too, reason. Yeah. That was like yeah, the, probably I mean, the biggest mistake of the movie, and even that, I I kind of dealt with it. I was like, ah, he's just another, he's a yeah. player character. Cool, throw him in. Yeah, he's, he's, he's your custom. Fine. I mean, I mean, at least they kind of said, hey, he's a descendant of Scorpion. So I was like, no, I mean, okay, they tied I mean, it in decently. Fine. At least it wasn't just some random no, like no, no. And, they did, <laughs> and and the thing that gets me is people are like, oh, this is awful. I was like, look, I got everything I wanted from this movie. Yeah. Oh which yeah. Was right. One. Uh. Brutal fights. Brutal fights yeah. and kills, and I got it in spades. Put the other Mortal Kombats to shame in that regard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. On, honestly, some like it wasn't necessarily quite as bad as some of the recent video games, but they were pretty close with some of this good stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and two, they gave a lot of fan service, which is very yeah. important in a video game movie. <laughs> the jokes are so funny with the, Bro, the fa- yeah. Low kick. Low kick. Is that the only move you know? Look at motherfucker. <laughs> like, I, mean, I know some funny. people that would probably probably didn't get that, but anyone who's played a decent amount of Mortal Kombat, you know what I mean? That is so uh, funny. Uh, like you said, the Steve fatality Hulk. or uh, flawless victory. Victor, yeah, I, that I was, do yeah. feel like e- those are great because they were nods. Otherwise, the writing of those lines is fucking off. To be fair, those lines, it's like, how do you get them into a natural dialogue? It's like, uh, you you committed a fatality. See, like, yeah, it so goes again with the lines of, like, how do they get the super abilities? I, I honestly <laughs> would have just taken the announcer voice with the fucking overlay in, like, a narrator voice. Like, literally, oh I would have taken that where he did that and then did that and nobody, like, notices. It's just, like, for us. I would have. But otherwise, those were really cool. Um, everybody's fatalities with, yeah, with the exception cool. of maybe Sonya, I think for me was, I think her fatalities were a little. I I would have preferred the neck snap one, but other than that, I think it yeah. was pretty decent. Um, yeah, they did. Some people were mad about like some characters not looking the right way or not being important, like General Rizo or the vampire chick what's her name the donna nadana or nadanya yeah but then again it's like those things are like it doesn't look good on screen like even you, uh, i mean and they would have they looked good they were cool character designs but one they would have cost more money that yeah because then you're putting Two, more yeah <laughs> the characters just don't fucking matter neither of them if you're gonna kill them off in like them, the first yeah, five minutes right <laughs> and, and neither of them sh- show up in more than like one or two games yeah, so it's like, what's, why am I going to put all that work into a, a character design? Yeah, Rizo when? doesn't show We're up We're going to end up killing this person anyway. <laughs> and Nadana, Nadana or Nadanya or whatever, I don't think shows up till like Armageddon or something. I don't even remember. 
but they're, I did they're like so... uh, Melina's design. Oh, like I was, was I was really cool. waiting for like because I was like, yeah, why did I, they I wish they like, went harder something. on that. I wish they went a little harder, but I'm glad they did the. Uh... I liked it. Yeah, it was cool how no, they did cool. up doing that. I, with I wanted them to go harder with a regular team. Oh, you I see what you mean. Just like just. Yeah, that would have been cool if they just if you've seen her face more for like the teeth kind of sticking out. Just a out. little bit, or maybe some of the yeah. teeth poking through her jaw or something. Yeah, I don't that know. Would have been cool. I don't know. That I'm not gonna like be a Hollywood VFX designer and blah blah blah. I I would just say like I wanted her mouth a little more monstrous when it was closed, but otherwise when it was open and everything and she did her thing, great. Uh in addition to that, um trying to think of anything that was really like uh i guess i felt like there were some characters who were like pushed up really high or lowered down depending on the character and then well i heard a lot of people didn't like luke king was like kind of not really being as strong as he should yeah so that was one of mine i didn't mind at first i was even a little questioning the the casting until he took his shirt off that's what I said too, and I was like, "No, bro, that's that's personally right there." Every fucking buddy, right I every like, fucking buddy I, in the dude, because I went to watch with my family. We rented out the theater, you know what I mean? Like 20, 20 people, which uh, was cool. Uh, but we we went and did that, and I went. And we were talking with him after, and I was like, "Yeah, I was almost not happy with Bruce Lee." And then my, even my dad's just like, "Yeah." Then he took his fucking shirt off, and I was like, "Yeah, he did." He went, "Bro, motherfucker, bro." <laughs> Oh, bro, yeah, he Bruce Lee the shit out. It was great. Like, immediately, I was like, all right, never mind. I'll shut the fuck up. You're right. That's a good That's a good Luke King. I was a little <laughs> mad that it's, like, having these certain characters. Uh... Two reasons. One, there's, there were story characters that are, like, very important, right? Like, Luke King is usually the hero of the story. And so having him like downgraded to like a very sidekickish character, even below like Sonya or Jax in a lot of ways, not admit maybe in strength or skill, but in screen time and pushing, yeah. that's how I felt like where they were set. Um, it's a little rough, but even beyond that, I was pissed because those matchups and the fights don't work right in the game. So like fighting, for example, Cabal and Liu Kang, right? He's having a bunch of trouble. It's so easy to beat Cabal as Liu Kang. It's literally you fire a fireball behind you and then Spice will kick that way. <laughs> he can block almost all his moves. Um, I mean, there's obviously room for play on any character, right? But some of those characters have interactions that are, like, really tough for other characters to beat or certain characters to beat. Uh, the last one was I really felt like, man, they gave Sub-Zero a super upgrade in this motherfucker. They were like, yeah, Sub-Zero is the G. Yeah, which they did for sure. Which I was, I, I, guess, I was cool oh, with. Uh, but then when Scorpion came back, I was expecting a little more from him. Be because in the original story they do like come back and man, Scorpion trashes his ass. But in this one, I they did the more the like two heroes had to fight to beat him thing, which it was cool. I just wanted one thematically like power wise scorpion coming back as a ghost to be like stronger and able to fight sub zero now that he has supernatural powers. And I wanted his revenge to be a little more like personal and not like kind of shared. Yeah. Other I guess that, just because they did that whole descendant thing. No, there, no. Like, and it was, it was cool. Like uh, I said, those are little, and they're all yeah, little should, things. You know. They're not like big yeah, yeah, yeah. issues. These no, are no, like, no, if, if I could have right? had yeah. any changes, but otherwise, once again, like, the bigger the biggest thing for me was getting those brutal fights with decent mm -hmm. martial arts choreography which i felt like it had it was pretty good um i did laugh that like people made were making fun of the, the new character and they're like his power is to get his ass beat so that he can fight back <laughs> i w i was kind of like i didn't i didn't really care for his uh i know you know what i said was because i told my friends like so they basically just gave him black panther's armor <laughs> but man, he can make, he can that, make weapons out of it, yeah, and he absorbs and no, it definitely he, he explains it as he's like, I yeah, it absorbs and I can bounce it right back out to you, which you gave to me. Yeah, it's like yeah, so that's, that's uh, they gave him there. like weapons too, so like he could make. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it. yes, okay, cool. He has he has but, some weapons. But now. yeah, I just thought it was so funny. They were like, yeah, his superpower is he sucks at fighting, so he needs them to kick his ass. <laughs> I know that was that's a good one. 
But other than that, he was okay no, character, no, no. I guess. Was, like I said, I had no problem with I the character. Trying, I was trying to figure out at the beginning if that was his wife or his mom at first. Because I was like, because the way they kind of, at first, the interaction didn't feel like it was his wife. And I was like, and then when he, when he said that was his dad, I was like, oh, okay. That, oh, all yeah, right. No, that, I, I agree. I felt like, honestly, I felt like <laughs> the those three characters, that whole family was just like, in general, meh. Like, yeah. as far as acting, Patron, no offense to any of the actors, just, like, I felt like there was more time, which I'm glad there was, but I felt like there was more time put into, like, the characterizations of, like, Kano and Sonya and Liu Kang and Kung Lao, which... I liked Kano. Was Kano pretty cool. was pretty spot I, on, yeah. I, at first, me and my friend were like, so they basically made him an anti-hero, but then at the very end, we were like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they they, there's, the there's good though, Kano now. <laughs> they did good. I was a little concerned about it too because I was like, they're going to go with Kano as a hero. Interesting. And then they did the switch. And I was like, that was a good writing. That was a good set. Like, especially because he wasn't like there to be a good guy. He's like $3 million. All yeah. right, motherfucker. I mean, they already was whooping his ass from the beginning. So yeah, he, yeah, I, he was just in it for the beginning to get some power. <laughs> he's there to give Sonya her mark. But yeah, and that, I liked it. It was a good, like you said, it, it gave me all the things I wanted from a Mortal Kombat movie, yeah, and that's, that's what cool. I really wanted. It so yeah, and I, I'm hoping yeah, that they will do that second one. I mean, it sounds like they will from all the, I mean, people loved it. Yeah, from, people were really, I really enjoying it. I don't see the reason why they wouldn't uh, do another one. I would love if they just do a Scorpion and Sub Zero spinoff too. Oh, like that, man. that whole thing, like on its own, was pretty good. I think I it's good, but I think they've already hit it so hard that it would be real. Like they, they could maybe do a prequel thing. You know, yeah, that's why I said more of a prequel thing. Yeah, instead but of like I, an. Act, I yeah. wonder because that would just be a ninja movie with Sub Zero. Yeah. Because Scorpion didn't have any special powers or anything. Nothing like at that point. point, but other than that, like I said, it was pretty cool. I, like uh, I said, it was great, but, and I definitely am looking forward to hopefully some sequels. Yeah, they uh, they've sequel, yeah. they were obviously, Johnny Cage. Was so, yeah, yeah, yeah supposed they to were be. obviously <laughs> setting up for sequels with Johnny Cage and Shao Kahn. There was a ton of like. Yeah, it's a t- yeah, little Easter eggs. Um, um, which I'm assuming is where we're gonna get Katana, and where hopefully Liu Kang becomes the hero. I don't, I have no f- idea what's going on. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they maybe kill Cole they in the first. Get... Maybe they made Cole take Johnny Cage's place to die in the first part of Who knows? the second. I mean, that... Movie. that would be a hilarious callback, though, to like kill him right away in the beginning. It's like, yeah, you remember this guy who was kind of the hero last time? This guy, yeah, Batman. Yeah. You know, and the two, maybe it was just the writers just kind of thinking, like, I don't want to write something that's already been no, done. No, and I, I definitely appreciate the fact that it's not, like, I don't want one that's the same as the movie before. And I don't want one that's the same as the comics or the same as the game, right? Even though I say these things like, oh, it was different than this and I kind of want it to be mm-hmm. that way. I don't want it to be the exact same. I want it to be a good representation, right, of this. And obviously that's a personal, like, view of what you you know whatever what person thinks is a good representation but i i want a new uh vision of it right like i think that's something games do well a lot like not like cod or anything but like mortal Kombat generally does a good job in even though the game is basically the same every single game it's relatively different there's some new aspect of gaming involved uh, an open world aspect is, you know, they done. Uh, the stories are expounded really well, right? They choose something new to do that advances the game in a meaningful mm-hmm. way, and uh, I think that's kind of just what I want from a movie, right? Something new that gives some new kind of context to the um, yeah thing. So, like in this one, I actually thought it was really cool to have, even though like I, I we kind of were bugging on it a little or trashing on it. The Dragon Mark was probably one of the cooler new additions because yeah, it's a way better. It's a way better like choosing method than like yeah, some random dudes get on a boat somewhere f- for no reason because they have no yeah. clue. It's like yeah, it's just a weird underground fighting tournament. Whereas this one, I thought it was cool. Although obviously they'd have to go into who got the marks. It made originally. it more mythical, you know, like yeah, it, yeah more like, connected. You were chosen. You were born with this mark. It's okay. like oh wow. That was, <laughs> that was one difference in this one that I'm not sure how I feel good or bad. Was like Raiden was a huge dick. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. He was <laughs> compared to other Raidens in even yeah. the show, or like even Dark Raiden was like mean, but he wasn't like a total dickweed all the time oh no he was kind of like 
he kind of acted a little <laughs> like Dark Raiden, just not killing people. He was just like, yes, you will do what I say, because you suck. <laughs> Yeah, when they all first come in, he's like, this is what we have to work with. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, goddamn, Raiden. Great pep talk. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, some of it is kind of like that Kung Lao Kano thing where it's like, just make fun of him until it activates this stuff. Or uh, yeah, when he's like, yeah, I sent, I thank you for training my, my warrior or whatever when he sends him away and Goro goes after him. Which I thought that was a pretty good fight. Um, I, yeah, honestly, all bad. the fights were pretty good in my opinion. Uh, I was happy with all of them. Nice. Um, um, yeah. All right. What else? I was it? gonna go onto my other list here. Of uh, Marvel came out about six days ago with like a new trailer, which kind of just just summed up everything that's happening. Yeah, over. yeah. They were kind of. It was really kind of. It was really sad. You know, they even had Stanley kind of doing the voiceover and everything, and then they kind of talked about you know what's to come in the future, and so they kind of talked about Wakanda. Yeah, they had talked about Black Ever, Panther 2 think, and... Uh, uh, Doctor Strange 2 is coming out yeah. as well. Guardians Volume 3. Uh, yeah, they were... Captain Marvels. Yeah, well, I think so... it's... The, isn't it Marvels? Just Marvels? Oh, yeah, maybe it's just Marvels. But I, I can't remember. But what they were saying it's supposed to be Captain Marvel with uh, Monica Rambo as well and... Uh, and Ms. Kamala Marvel Khan, well. right? Yeah. Yes, that's what they were saying. All three of them were supposed That'll to be That'll be pretty movie. dope. Mar oh, no, that's the comic. Um... Let's see. Um, the Marvels. So it's just the okay. Marvels. It's called the Marvels. Okay. I think so. Yeah, but we'll see. They may change because that's obviously not coming. Uh, I think it's yeah. It's still not scheduled out for a while. Or, it's twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three at least. Like, there's no, especially the way the industry is now. I have no idea how they've changed shooting and stuff. Or which yeah. honestly, I I feel like that should be the least of their concerns with the way green screen is nowadays. Mm -hmm. like you probably have all the actors especially some of the quality of actors they have like they have some really high quality actors in the mcu honestly mm -hmm. and, and as much as people will make fun of this or that like basically you pick one of the big names in the mcu and they are active outside of the mcu in some form or fashion doing good movies um, right i'm trying to think of someone yeah. who really isn't but i think rainer is the only one who hasn't really done too much but like and then uh let's see so black widow is supposed to be yeah coming out this july 9th shang chi comes out what this august yeah as well we got loki uh, obviously um, Ellen and loki comes out this june 9th um september 3rd is when shang chi's coming out okay cool uh, um oh and then the internals comes out as well they we actually got a little bit of a sneak peek of the internal yeah i was so and happy and to dude the funniest thing for me is the uh i forget the actor's name but the guy who plays uh the driver right. in in Stuber. Oh, you know the uh, guy, the like the in the uh, Indian, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah I know his name. I yeah, the, he's a comedian. He you is, know what's he's, funny? He's I hilarious. Should, I don't know if you see the picture, but you see how Billy got. No, I was gonna say he actually got put in a magazine for like Sexiest Men Alive. I think he oh, might have. Yeah, had, he did. And he did. and was like getting compliments from like The Rock and people on Twitter because his workout regimen for Marvel got him so sculpted, bro. Like, bro, like and don't get me wrong, he's he even says he's like before I was just like a chubby com a chubby comedian. That's all I was. But then you have to go to a Marvel movie and <laughs> and, and you have to get fit cuz you're around all these fit people and I really wanted to eat a salad, man. Or not like a salad, <laughs> like a piece of meat, anything. Dude, he did a whole interview with, like, uh, Colbert, I think, did an interview with him on it. Which is Maybe we'll play that oh, on our okay. outro okay. and see if we don't That'd get flagged. Nice. Um, oh, my goodness. But, no, uh, but yeah. yeah, that was funny. I can't really wait for all this stuff. I mean, I'm that, so and then excited. they talked about Ant-Man, the Quantum Age, I think was called. Yes, Quantum, Quantum Realm. Realm. Uh, uh, and then the last thing they revealed was Fantastic Four was in their next. Uh, yeah, their next phase. Come out next. It's 2023, so no talks about I think they said. So far right I, now. Think, I think they're being more careful with it because, one, it's one of the most valuable titles. Mm -hmm. Besides Spider-Man, I think X-Men is number one next on the comic book list, right? So yeah. It, it probably yeah, would it, be their next It already seller. would be the one that has a, a general market, right? And on top of that, X-Men already has a movie market from the – right? 
So like yeah, they're... there's a general audience that is yeah, already and so they don't want to fuck it up because it's already been kind of established as this thing, and they need to like one they need to like own it. So they they need to have an idea, and the X Men universe itself is almost as big as half of these titles combined, right? Like when you consider the breadth of characters that exist in Thor comics versus the breadth of characters that exist in X Men comics. It's just a big character just difference. All the spinoffs and side teams. Right, and, and that's what I mean. The the numbers are insanely different, right? And even it, and that's like books, right? Like you could say, but even just character count, right? Like there's how many Asgardians that are named fifty at max. There's fucking seventy, eighty just X Men team members, not including their villains or other random mutants or. And you know, and then on top of that, the stories themselves and the characters themselves are kind of unwieldy, in the sense that they're so powerful. Like the X Men have to be written down in a lot of cases in order to like fight other characters, right? Like even Which just for did. the fact that they have the hacks abilities of like psychic power and telepathy being very prevalent all over the X Men, right? Like I feel like psychic abilities are rare in most comics, except mm. for the X Men. Everybody's yeah. a psychic in the X Men. Every goddamn buddy. <laughs> like ninety percent of all the psychics in Marvel comics are probably X Men. I'd say like fifty percent of all the psychics in comics are probably from the X Men. Mm. I'm probably over exaggerating because I know there's a whole psychic <laughs> comic from like Images or something, and I can't remember the uh -huh. name of it. Psy Team or something, or maybe it was Vertigo. So it's I'm being un unrealistic, right? But and exaggerating. But they legitimately do have a very high number of, like, kind of haxy characters, reality warpers. And so, like, trying to write anything in like that is going to be... I mean, think, thinking about the show Legion was a great example of, like, how one character, just one Marvel X-Men character, required a huge setup to, like, cement him in a realistic way, right? Mm -hmm. To, like, make his powers believable and understandable. It took, like, a whole season. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, we'll see how far off we have to wait for the X-Men, but, you know, I'm not in a hurry right now. I'm guessing five years max. Probably, yeah. But that's max. I'd say in realistic, so from now, 2024 is when I would put a date. Probably, most uh, likely. Guess. And I wish for more soon, and I, I don't know. I, I, I want to see what they do, because they've done such a good job with these other characters that I, I it's kind of like watching Kate's write a new character, right? Like, He's done mm -hmm. so well on so many characters before with Venom and Thor and Thanos, etc., etc., that you could throw him on anybody and I'd want to read the comic, right? Mm -hmm. You throw him on uh, Puck from, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's, it's like whoever, and I'll read his Puck comic because he's probably going to make a good one. <clears throat> um, some other things, too. Did you see Miss Marvel's uh, outfit? It, it got leaked. Uh, uh, it looks pretty good. It, it looks good. Does I she have an ass yet? Huh? Yeah, she's wearing like her own. She's wearing her own, the whole original outfit, and she's wearing her Converse that she wears in the comic book. That's the little cool. red. Uh, the little so, nods. Yeah. Once again, so Marvel's cool. excellent with nods and stuff, and and as much criticism as Miss Marvel gets for this and that, that like, it is still not a bad movie, right? Like, it's pretty mm -hmm. decent as far as most general movies go. I feel like if you were to measure half of all movies, most of them would fall under B movie. Right. You know what I mean? Um, did, did you have you checked out uh, Bad Batch yet? On Disney no, Plus? that's my next one. I got Bad oh, Batch, got Jupiter's Legacy, because I've just finished off... Well, Falcon Winter Soldier was a couple weeks ago, and Invincible was last week. I finally finished that, too. And then I'm following a bunch of anime I have to keep up on now. So, like, I just, Well, another thing, so like I finished Ruby, that new season had come out. Attack on Titan just finished up. Yeah. Um, There's a couple different ones, but... Uh, a new one that came out was Tokyo Revengers, which I'm really enjoying. It's about a guy who, uh, who's basically a like loser, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he hears like his ex girlfriend died, and uh, then somebody pushes him onto the train tracks, and basically right before he dies, he gets sent back in time to when he was like a kid, and nice. you know makes whatever change, ends up saving his life, figures out he has the ability to kind of like go back in time a certain amount that sounds so familiar with another one i've seen it was oh there's the tons that do it his is, his good. is a little unique in certain ways it's it's more of like a 
mix of like a, a life drama one slash story and mm-hmm. then it's got uh you know it's it's got the typical kind of time travel and stuff in it but it like it's, it's different it's very interesting nice. Nice. um and not to say it's super unique but i think it's well done which is important because <laughs> you could have a unique idea but if it's done badly it's just gonna be bad right um some other things too there was a a promo pick for uh usagi uh, oh yeah yeah uh yojimbo samurai rapper Yo- yes I yeah that one that. looks pretty good stan uh i forget his name stan saki i think is his last name i can't exactly remember but anyways uh he's been writing this book for oh my gosh quite a while now um and so it was originally i forgot who it was with originally and now the book, because they just they bring back the books again, and they're with IDW right now. So okay. and I've been reading them so far with them. Um, it's cool. It's an interesting art style. It's uh, interesting books. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoy to enjoy Usagi for for who he is so far. And uh, kind of get you know, excited to see this uh, animated show to come out and see nice. how that's going to turn out. Um, awesome. So that that promo pic came out. Um, there was. Um, I don't know when that's supposed oh may 27th i don't know if you've seen it but the official trailer for the regrets for paramount plus just came out um it's all gonna be cgi some people are already kind of questioning it because they're you know tommy kind of looks a little somewhat weird with the ball head but it's just like eh, they looked weird anyways when they were <laughs> yeah, 2Ds. I, gonna... well but it's it's the it's the same as like one piece right like how i said one piece shouldn't be made live action yeah because the, it's not made to be that way right like the characters are designed to very much in that style we talked about before right like it's they're styled specifically for a reason right like they draw mm-hmm. people who are unlikable as fat and ugly and out of proportion and mm-hmm. and even like if they want to make someone look strong well they have a stupid big upper body right or a or, <coughs> or if they you know just little shit like that um and so I think Rugrats is the same way. Like, it's very style-specific, and it works really yeah, well for a cartoon. I'm not sure how it looked live action. Yeah, I think it would do better it CGI, though. I, I do. No, think... it's sorry, it is CGI. It's, yeah, no, it's no, just... no, no, I heard that you said this. So I do think it'll be oh. better. Uh, this oh, oh I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah check it out. I mean, it, I'm just is excited it... that some of the original oh, voice okay. actors are up. They're doing this. Nothing can keep us apart. Oh, yeah, that kind of style. And then uh, oh, the only thing is they won't have a few actors back because i think i remember the voice actor of tommy's dad died not not too long ago yeah that I, did. I, I, I mean it's kind of one of the it's one of the reasons that it's it's rough for me because there's it's twofold one right that like voice actors are very dear to us because they create a a memorable tone and some you know what i mean very specific and not everybody but if if you're paying attention to that kind of stuff, like it's jarring and you, you never quite get over someone's voice switch. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did the same thing in Ruby with the character, uh, crow because of the stuff that was happening with, uh, Vic Mignogna. Mm. And, uh, everyone, everyone's like, Oh, you can't tell the difference. I can tell the difference. <laughs> I'll take a blind taste test. We could, or a uh, hearing test and we could do it. I will tell you the difference 10 out of 10 times that that voice actor is a different voice actor and does a different <laughs> voice than Vic Mignogna did. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not worse or anything. It's just, once again, after some kind of time, you kind of get uh, attached to the voice. I actually think they replaced right. Goten's voice actor recently in English, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Um, for the you most know which one, I did, which one really kind of did the same thing to me is when they redubbed the uh, Dragon Ball Z stuff and they changed uh, Frieza. Yeah, Frieza's voice. That one changed. for sure. I was like, because that that voice was so. I mean, to me, it was Specific, just like, and, yeah. Frieza and now was it, a... new one was. I don't know. Just fine. Doesn't it's, hit it. It's just. To me it's like. different. Um. It's and once again, it's just kind of like seeing a different one's not right. Like once again, you've got to see it sometime. I don't know if I've ever showed you the link. Maybe we'll show that one at the end to the alternative dub of Dragon Ball Z. It's like an official dub, but it's just not done by Fanimation or Funimation. It's done by some okay. other company. Huh. Um, I gotta look it up now. Well, while you're looking that up, then uh, they did, I know you've seen you've probably seen this, but they are uh, releasing a um, a rap. Uh, what was it? Apache, sorry, rap. <laughs> Apache uh, Captain America 
Um, and it's all going to be co-created yes, I, by I did see Native that. Americans. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I, I'm excited to check this out. I, I um, want to see more, you know what I mean? Not just from that, but from like other cultures as well and stuff. I like, yeah. I know other people are always like, why do you need to have a black Captain America or a black Superman? I was like, I want every <laughs> ethnicity. I want to see every, I love multiverse stuff. So like, I want to see Asian uh, Superman. I want to see asian mm-hmm. superman who got taken over by that by the japanese or you know what i mean i want to see it all like or I, you want to see russians uh, yeah superman yeah russian like, captain right. america right like an actual russian captain america not the one we get right with uh what's the one we get in when in the new black widow uh oh you uh oh you mean uh oh what's his name? i know it's killing me <laughs> oh and then you know what i found kind of was, was like Guardian. oh wow that was Red oh right you know, as I really kind of uh, was out of the blue news was uh, Dragon Ball is coming out with a new movie. Yeah, a new, a new Brawly. Yeah, that's going to be great. I, I'm glad they're continuing. I wonder how they're going to tie it into the manga if they are. Because who knows? And the last few things I had here was Sailor Moon is uh, getting a movie as well. Comes out June 3rd called Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Eternal the movie you know people love say that i actually was just watching the the Pretty remake just to see just to see and uh eh, it wasn't too bad i mean it's very girlyish in some ways but it's kind of has it's japanese kind of anime kind of you know superpower ways and so yeah so it wasn't too bad i've checked it out a few episodes but it's not my thing really but i know there's there, i know there's quite a few people that love sailor moon so um I don't ever really diss it because it does have some a lot of fans, and if it's like I said, it's it's got some good moments here and there, but and it's got some. <laughs> meh. Um, let's see. And the last thing I want to say was, oh, I think that was I know, that might have been it. Well, We're you know, did you check out the anyway. designs for New Mutants? Yeah, I was just gonna say last thing was, did you check out the New Mutant designs? The New for, Mutant uh, ones or the, the Hellfire Gala ones? The whole Hellfire Gala Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. I've seen them. There, uh, I love that everyone is, like, bitching on the thing. They're, like, men wearing dresses. I was like, have you ever seen the actual galas? Yeah. They're, they're, they're dressed up in all kinds of random bullshit. That's pretty much perfectly on point. And the fact that Emma Frost is a high society, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll Don't check it out. Anywhere. That's exciting. I mean, as long as it's um, yes. what's his name, to me, taking the rain still. Uh, oh gosh, how am I forgetting his name? Uh, yeah, uh, Hickman. Yeah. If it's on, I mean, we know he's gonna do some good with the story. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, and people are like, oh, you can tell Hickman has already checked out on these stories. I was like, I don't know if we're reading the same stuff, man. Like, and I don't expect people to enjoy Hickman's writing because it's a full story writing, right? Like. Yeah. Hickman's story isn't great until it's finished kind of thing like it doesn't all make sense until you finish the story most of the time mm-hmm. now it's not to say it's not great in the meantime but otherwise it's a slow burn right like it takes time for some of these like Ar- how long did it take Jason Aaron's to finish his run on Thor I think that was like seven to eight years right was it on- wasn't amazing the whole time there are issues that are not great you know what I mean? Or not pushing the story forward or kind of boring mm-hmm. or didn't make sense. It's just that there's also really great long standing plot points throughout the entire set of stories that connect with each other and build a huge story that by the end of it, you're really happy because you don't get a right. lot of answers from Jason's Aaron's stuff until pff, the end of mm, after Seeker Wars. You know what I mean? When they finished it all off with King Thor. Which is cool, and I'm glad they did it. I found the dub. It's called the uh, Ocean Pioneer Ocean dub of Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Um, right. Let's check it out there. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play a little bit of it at the end of our episode, but I do think we're about time. I know we wanted. To yeah, since I think we're pretty much done here. That's pretty much all I had to yeah. for today. I think um, uh, same for me, which is cool. Uh, I'm pretty excited, man. We got some really great stuff still coming this year, and hopefully, even more will be announced. Cause yeah. You know, I know Resident, uh, Resident, was it? Village, yeah. Resident Evil Village. Yeah, 
that just came out. I know some people are hating it, some people are loving it, but it, it I'll check like, it out. It looks like every other Resident Evil to me, so I don't know. If you <laughs> like Resident Evil, I don't know why you wouldn't like it. If you do like, don't like Resident Evil, well, then why would you play it anyway? <laughs> All right, but yeah, um, like I said, I don't want to keep you too long. I know we got to go. Yeah, let's check out the this little depth here. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get a exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.